Let's talk about the different options that you might have to charge up your battery. In this case, I'm using a big battery, Husky 2, connected to a DIY home solar system. This is a small array of around 2,400 watts. And I'm gonna talk about all the different components that we have here, how to connect it to a battery like the Husky 2, and provide an option that you can hook a charger to it if you need to charge this at night. So throughout this video, we'll talk about the components, the battery and what it's capable of receiving and sending out and different things that you might find helpful if you're just now getting into the space of building your own solar system. And currently I have the system turned off other than the shunt. The shunt is connected to the positive and the negative cables of the battery. So we have a small wire coming right here for the power line coming into the shunt. And then we have that connected into this negative bar right here. So that allows me in discharge to be able to monitor the amount of consumption or the amp hours that we're using out of the battery. I did want to explain that because I don't want you focusing on the light thinking that the system is turned on. It's just that the shunt meter is turned on. And although the inverter is a very important component of this system, I'm not going to be discussing that much today. I will briefly touch on it. We have a ground going to our ground system and a negative coming into the bus bar. And now I want to talk about all the components from this section over because that's going to be very important if you're looking to charge your battery with solar. First, I'm going to start with these two bus bars. You may not have to have two bus bars in your system, but in mine, I want to run a shunt because in my testing environment, I need to be able to discharge batteries and understand if they have the capacity level that the battery is saying that they do. And I do have a capacity test on this battery. If you'd like to check that out, I'll have a link in the description and uh, cards up here so you can click on those and go check that out as well. But if you're looking to build this, hang out with me for just a little bit longer. So if you don't have the shunt, you will not need two of these, but you want to make sure that any of your lugs that you're fastening down to your bus bar have the actual uh, rated size that goes over that screw that comes out or the bolt that comes out and tighten it down. You want to make sure that's fitted correctly. So Moving over to the positive side, we have another bus bar here. So this is the positive side coming in from the battery. And then we have this wire here. You may not have that if you don't have a shunt like I do. This is just a positive to allow the shunt to turn on. So we have a positive and negative connection for the shunt. This may not be in your system. If you're doing a really basic system, you're gonna have a positive and negative coming from the battery. Then from here, we have this going this way, and then this coming in, you know, bi-directional this way, right? So really, well, it's not really bi-directional. It's being fed from the solar charge controller down into the battery. So if we have this disconnected like we do right now, I can still charge the battery up because I have a positive connection and a negative connection into the charge controller. So when we turn this charge controller on, even though I do not have this switch turned on, I'm still able to charge the batteries with solar. So if I want to turn this system on, then I will just flip this over and then we will get, I'm going to make sure the battery's on, and then we will get power to our inverter because the energy flow is coming through, up through a fuse. So we do have to have this in here. This is very important. You want to add this as close to this bus bar as possible because if something happens with your system, you can just turn that off and it shuts down the entire positive side, except for the charge controller. If you have that turned on, you will still have uh, power coming in on this bus bar. But to turn it off here or turn it on here, that's fine. Now, if we're pulling too much current or we're using too much of a load, we need to protect this circuit. So we put in the appropriate size ANL fuse and you can use different fuses. In my test setup, I'm using cheap fuses because I can replace them pretty easily if, and affordably if I blow them. So then that passes through another bus bar. And then from this bus bar is my distribution. So I'm gonna send that over to the inverter and that's what's gonna allow this to all be protected down this line. This wire is just going up to our charge controller into 
a breaker of its own, uh, set the appropriate size breaker, and then feed it into the bus bar. The uh, solar actually coming in, this is into an array that's outside, and that array is 2,400 watts. And I have that feeding in here in two different feeds, so two different arrays really. And then I combine those arrays into parallel, and really that's just depending on the amount of panels that you have and your charge controller uh, inputs that it can accept. For me, I took three panels, 400 watts each, and then sent each one of them in as a string or a branch, they call it. And then I combined them with a parallel connector. So it raises the amps on that system rather than the volts. And I'm able to feed it into a breaker. So if something happens and I can't make it outside to use my disconnect switch outside, I can disconnect from inside. I can then turn this off or on. And I'm gonna turn it on in this situation. So we're gonna turn on a charge controller because we've turned on the solar. Now we don't have anything feeding to the batteries yet because we have this battery that is turned off or it's tripped at this point. And you can manually trip it by pressing the button. So from here it feeds in the negative and the positive and it activates your charge controller. Depending on your solar charge controller, you have a bunch of different settings, whether you're charging lithium ion phosphate batteries or lead acid batteries, a good charge controller will have different options for that. Now we need to turn it on so we're gonna charge the battery. And before I do that, I do wanna start up the app that's connected to this. This has a Bluetooth and we can receive the information from the battery to the app. And I wanna show, if you look right here, right in the center, it's gonna show the amps coming in. When I turn this on, we're gonna to start to charge the battery with solar. So now we've made that connection and it flows into the battery and start to charge up. And as you can see right here, this is the current amps coming in off the solar array. So we have charge at 35.4 amps and 53 volts. And if my math serves me correctly, that's around 2000 watts that we're charging the battery. Now there is a BMS inside the battery that we need to take into consideration. On this battery, it's 100 amps. So we're in a completely safe zone because our charge controller is at a max of 60 amps. And that's my preferred method of charging a battery during the day because we're using the sun to do that. However, at night, if you have a bad storm rolling in and you just need to get your battery bank completely charged up, you can connect a AC charger to the negative and the positive of the battery to charge this system up, whether you have one battery or you've got 10 batteries. This battery is something that you cannot connect in series, but you can connect it in parallel. This is uh, specific for this battery. Each battery has its own uh, capabilities. So you wanna make sure to look into that. If you're buying 12 volt batteries, then you can series four of those together and then start paralleling for that. It depends on your overall voltage of your system. This is a basic rundown of how to complete a system or to build a basic solar system to charge your batteries. And I hope I was able to provide you with some type of valuable information on how to build your own DIY solar system. If you're interested in this battery or this charge controller or this inverter, I'll have links in the description below so you can check those out. But if you found this video helpful in any way, smash the thumbs up button. It really does help me out. Let's me know that I did an okay job and I hope to catch you in some future videos.